I was thinking this morning that Lent has 40 days and the season of Easter has 50 days, 50 days to celebrate, to contemplate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not sure why one is 40 and one is 50, uh, but at the same time, I think it's, it's significant perhaps because the risen Lord is a truth in our faith that needs to be contemplated. We need to appreciate that and understand it and live it. And perhaps maybe 50 days gives us a better opportunity to do all of that, to spend 50 days in meditation and contemplation and celebration of the reality of Jesus who is risen from the dead and is among us. What are the implications uh, for, for that when we take that to heart? I think it does take a longer time to absorb the implications of this central mystery of our faith. As sisters and brothers in, in the faith, we are given time, time to draw into greater intimacy with the risen Lord, to appreciate his presence in our lives. And today in, in Matthew's gospel, uh, there's an attempt to deny, of course, the, the events of the resurrection with the testimony of the women uh, who were witnesses. They counter uh, the uh, the objections that uh, perhaps people had in, in those days around them. Rumors were that the body was removed while the soldiers slept and, and the payoff was, was I guess, uh, somewhat, uh, somewhat favorable. Our gospel readings all this week are going to be readings of encounters with the risen Lord. We'll, be, we'll hear of the, the various events uh, through the gospel accounts, how Jesus appeared to his disciples. He entered through locked doors. He showed them his wounds, his hands and his side. He eats with them and he gives them breath. He breathes on them to be filled with his own spirit. We will hear again the, the beautiful story of the Emmaus journey uh, later this week. There's just so many, especially as we look at the Acts of the Apostles, we have so many uh, situations to contemplate. And I think that's, that's why we have this time set aside uh, to celebrate Easter over these 50 days. Even the Psalm this morning uh, is, is a beautiful, prayer that, that we could pray each day. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, I you, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot, knowing that it is the Lord who is with us and holds us in his loving embrace, who counsels us and who who gives us hope. All the scriptures this week, I think, are meant to help us to appreciate uh, the risen Lord. And we use this time, I think, for, in a sense, for personal, personal growth and, and development. If you wish to spend, you know, some retreat time in the quiet of, of your life, uh, to recount for yourself the encounters that you've had with the Lord, perhaps in your own history, the times that the Lord has made himself more visible, more part of your life. And there are many, I'm sure, from time to time that we have those, those encounters, those, those experiences that the Lord has been and is with us. And that's why we can uh, rejoice in this octave of the of Easter, uh, because we all these 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 eight days will will be celebrating uh, that the Lord is with us, and each 
uh, encounter with, with the Lord is something to uh, give thanks to God for. We jumped ahead uh, in the Acts of the Apostles here in our first, in our first reading, because that's, the, that's after Pentecost, Peter was inspired and strengthened by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit enough to preach, to tell the people that surrounded him the good news of the gospel, who Jesus was, who Jesus is, risen from the dead among us, strengthening his people, us. So maybe let us use these days of the octave of, of Easter. You let us use these days of the season, the 50 days of, of Easter, to identify the effect of Jesus' effect in our lives, past, and perhaps how he continues to be with us, inspiring us, and leading us on in hope to a wonderful future. <laughs> 